Hello, my name is Megan Rowe. I'm here with John Pope and welcome to Jazz North Online Broadcast. Thanks so much for joining us for the first Jazz North Online of 2021. We've got a great program coming up for you, including our feature on eight of the radio and podcast programs that you need to know about that are coming out of the north of England. Coming up, we have a conversation with Corin Wamba. We also spoke to Emma Johnson and Dave Kane about musician well-being. And in my musical tool shed this week, we have Dave Shooter. Really, really good conversation we had. Uh, he was well, trying yeah. to convert me to Ableton, so that was fabulous. <laughs> um, and Helena Summerfield talks to the Secret Night Gang from Manchester, whose track is now on Grand Theft Auto. Oh, all right. Uh, also, before we get into that, I should tell you, if you've not seen it already, Jazz North are running an open bursary scheme. Applications are currently open and the deadline is the 8th of February, so you want to get that in quickly if you want to be involved. Uh, this is a £500 award for anyone working in jazz. You could be a musician, you could be an educator, a promoter, someone who's running a podcast or a programme like this, anyone who's involved in jazz promotion. Um, get in touch. Go to jazznorth.org slash opportunities to find out more get involved this is a really vital lifeline for some people right now who are facing struggling hardships as lockdown rolls on but we continue to find a way to try and support our scene and we're glad to be able to do it but now we're going to get started with our rundown of eight radio shows and podcasts in the north of england that you need to know about megs what's our first one First up is Hot Biscuits, which is a radio show based in Manchester. It is hosted by Steve Buick. You can find it on www.fc-radio.co.uk. It is a very relaxing radio show, I would say. Lots of traditional jazz and lots of improvised uh, performances on there as well. So really good, just something to put on. Um, maybe whilst you're working from home, would definitely recommend it. Number two, second on our list, we've got Paul Rigby's Big Band and Beyond. This is coming out of Clitheroe on Ribble Valley FM and is an unabashed celebration of the big band sound and style. Uh, presented by drummer and educator Paul Rigby, uh, he's bringing you a two-hour selection of music from all over the eras, all over the world, different locations, different styles, professional bands alongside semi-professional bands and amateurs, which is great to see support for that kind of thing going on right now, when that's a little bit thin on the ground. But there's one thing it's all got in common, absolutely massive bands that sound huge. There's a huge diversity of music in there as well, so it's well worth checking out if you're interested in that kind of music. Number three, we have Left of Leeds, which is basically the weirdest most out there jazz that you could possibly find uh, I'm so glad that this radio show exists uh, it's hosted by Chapel FM, you can find it on chapelfm.co.uk and John Toulon he just, he just makes me laugh so much, he, he is an absolutely lovely guy um, and also I would recommend checking out his Twitter it's at Mr. Poolan. He's a very avid um, vinyl collector as well, and he talks so passionately about music. So would 100% listen to his show if you are into the more avant-garde, um, weird side of jazz. You've been, you've been on the show a couple of times, haven't you, Megs? Yes. Yeah, it, it, it was really fun. Really enjoyed it. All right. Uh, I think we've got a clip of John talking about his work with Left of Leeds. So let's check that out now and see what he's got to say about it. Uh, in 2014, the programme was called Jazz Goes to Leeds and featured uh, essentially local jazz musicians around the Leeds and West Yorkshire area, either in a recorded form or playing live in the Chapel FM studios in uh, Seacroft. Over the years, Jazz Goes to Leeds metamorphosized into Left of Leeds as the music became more into free jazz, improvisation, noise, drone, and experimental music generally. So now the programme's Left of Leeds uh, broadcasts first Tuesday of the month 
at uh, 8 pm, available on elfm.co.uk and occasionally 94.6 FM. We've also uh, hosted a number of live events featuring local jazz musicians and experimental musicians at the, uh, the beautiful Chapel FM building at Seacroft. And uh, a lot of people have uh, given us positive feedback about uh, the facilities there and the beautiful surroundings. Uh, we've also hosted for the last few years the overnight sessions of the uh, Chapel FM Musicathon, featuring uh, eight musicians broadcasting overnight. Uh, again, local live jazz, improvised, experimental music um, as part of, like I said, the Musicathon. So um, have a listen, elfm.co.uk or occasionally 94.6 FM, left of Leeds. We're going to step away from our official list of podcasts and radio in the north of England right now to talk a little bit about something a little bit more national. Freeness is a programme that runs on BBC Radio 3 and is presented by friend of the northern scene, part of our Northern Line family, Corey Mwamba. Uh, I spoke to Corey a little bit about his involvement with Freeness and how the radio programme came to be. He's been a real champion, not just for music in the north, but for all kinds of improvised music. But he's talked a little bit about his relationship with the North and some of the artists that he's had on there as well. So I'm going to throw now to my conversation with Corey Mwamba. Check it out. I'm Corey Mwamba and I'm a musician, a researcher, a promoter and a radio presenter. And I'm from Derby. The show that we do and the show that isn't quite show that they were expecting because mm. I think they were expecting a, a new jazz show mm. and um, and it was quite London centred and I showed them the rhizome and said okay there's this the rhizome is a is a is a web application that Tom Ward and I um, wrote mm. that has a database of now 1,400 musicians, people who make jazz and improvised music in Britain and Ireland, Mm -hmm. the two geographical islands of Britain and Mm -hmm. Ireland. So it's a living snapshot of of what the scene looks like (laughs) and on a national level. Mm -hmm. And, um, And, you know, I showed them the rhizome, you know, it explodes. And so that looks yeah. quite frightening. And then I whittled it down to all of the London bands that um, started from 2005, which for me is the kind of marker for when the new London jazz scene started mm-hmm. to the present day. And and it, it came down to 47. Wow. So, so I, I asked the question, do you want me to present a show with 47 bands or do you want me to just give you all of this extra stuff? Mm. And they overwhelmingly said, okay, well that, yeah, that's a quite convincing argument. And Mm. so, and so the show is, is not genre specific. Mm -hmm. It is a genre that the show focuses on. It Mm -hmm. focuses on a method of making music. And that method of making music is improvised music, is improvising. And although sometimes we jump away from that and just put on things that we like, mm-hmm. um, the main the main emphasis of the show is about improvising and what improvising does within music. Mm. So that's that's the focus of the show, and, and I think you know, in in general terms, um, I think because it's not genre specific and because it's method specific, mm-hmm. people find it easier to get into. Right. You know, I don't I don't know really. The the, the emails that we receive from people um, thanking us for the show, that seems to be that seems to be the method. That seems to be the thing. You know, because we we get. Um, comments from people who aren't into jazz Mm -hmm. you know that 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 (laughs) myth yeah yeah. and (laughs) you know ah i'm i'm i i haven't listened to a hundred years worth of music but i'm just not into it (laughs) Um, yes yeah yeah yeah. but 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 you know i mean the (laughs) 
But then when, when they listen to the show, they might be listening to something that very much defines itself as jazz. Mm -hmm. And they're liking it because they are the, 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 the experience of the listener is, is I'm trying to guide them through the method. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and the specialness and, and, and the joy of the method. Yeah. You know, without thinking about what the genre is. Yeah, because sure. sometimes it just doesn't matter. Before we even started the first show, mm -hmm. some friends of Radio 3 Forum weirdness found out that I was doing it because there was a press release. I think I remember And then this. one of them was like, oh, <laughs> you know, so it's going to be urban rap type jazz. Not for <sighs> me. Simply based on my name. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that person's not going to be listening to the show. Do I do I care if a racist doesn't listen to the show? No. I don't think I do. <laughs> I don't think I do. No. I'd no. be happy if they didn't listen to the show. Mm. You know. Um, same for misogynists, really. I, mm. I don't care. No, sure. Do something else. <laughs> but, but, you know, the, you know, kind of getting back on track so that <laughs> Nigel doesn't have too much to cut out. <laughs> Cheers, the, Nigel. The, <laughs> the, you know, the, the, the show, it's important that the show reflects the world because mm. improvising is a method of making music that, that is present in most if not all mm -hmm. musical cultures mm -hmm. i'm not going to say all because not all m methods of making music are universal mm -hmm. so it'd be stupid of me to say that that it's present in all musical cultures mm. other people could be more categorical mm. but i'm not going to be but where you do find it you know it it, it connects with people in a certain way mm -hmm. so it's kind of on the show, I think, as part of a national broadcaster, you know, to go around and try and find those things wherever they can. Mm -hmm. And that's basically it. Thank you for that, John. Um, lovely to see Corey. It really took me back to when I actually met Corey for the first time and he really inspired myself and my band to keep going in the di direction that we were and he really uh, gave us a lot of confidence. So it was really nice to hear that conversation with you two. The first time I met Corey, it happened to be my birthday and he bought me a pint. Didn't even know the guy. It was really <laughs> nice of him. Oh, that's nice. Okay, jumping back into our list of eight jazz programs and podcasts that you need to be aware of. We have got Jazz Scene from Martin Powell on BCB Radio. Uh, Martin's a wonderful presence. He's a long-running promoter in Bradford for Jazz at the Priestley and I think one of the nicest men in Northern Jazz. Just that's how it is. Uh, we've got a little bit of clip. We've got a little bit of clip. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a little clip of Martin here telling you all about how he programs this show. Check it out. So, who am I? Martin Powell, ad hoc jazz DJ, presenting, some might say, audio blacksmithing, jazz scene on BCB Radio 106.6 FM. Since taking over the mic from the erstwhile Robert Coolio Gibson, O.E. of Jazzy Orchard fame, some 11 years ago. In a seemingly parallel universe, I also organised JATP Jazz, all in Bradford, Yorkshire. In my very humble way, I try my best to support all jazz musicians, so regional, national and international, with no truck for elitism or badge wearing. So, if you would like your art airing, do drop me a line at Martin, that's M A R T I N dot Powell P O W E W L at BCB Radio dot co dot UK. 
My main social outlets regarding BCB Just Seen are Twitter at BCB Just Seen and of course the old mailing list which can be joined by request to the email address just spouted. At number five, we have Wakefield Jazz's Jazz Heads podcast. Thank you, John. Um, it, it's made by a jazz promoter and they are interviewing all the people that they have on at the venue. They ask them their top three favourite jazz tunes. So it's a great place to find new music to listen to. You can find it at jazzheads.podbean.com. We don't know who the host of this podcast is. So if you are the mystery podcast host, please will you comment below. Uh, we want to know all about you. Don't forget, we also want to read your comments. And if you've got any suggestions of other radio shows, podcasts, things that we should be checking out, leave them below this video. And don't forget to like and subscribe as well. Next up, number six on the list, the jazz program from Liverpool Jazz. This is hosted by Michael Serdlow with the able assistance of producer Edward Robinson. Uh, it's available both on FM radio in the Liverpool area and as a podcast. Uh, they combine a program of music which is mostly drawn from mid 20th century classic jazz, swing, hard bop, uh, with some more modern surprises thrown in, alongside listings and information about all of the things going on in the Liverpool jazz scene. Um, the show goes out every month and it's well worth checking out. Next up, we have a conversation with Emma Johnson and Dave Kane about musician well-being in this rather challenging time. We talk about our New Year's resolutions and how we hope to make the most of the time we have right now. Enjoy. I'm Emma Johnson. I'm a saxophonist and composer based in Leeds. Um, I'm the band leader of uh, Emma Johnson's Gravy Boat. Um, which is a contemporary quintet, uh, fingers crossed with an album out this year. Um, and as well as that, I do quite a lot of composing um, and I also play with a horn section for kind of recordings for various bands. Hi, I'm Dave Kin. I'm a composer and producer, bass player uh, and yoga teacher. Um, and I do lots and lots and lots of different stuff, kind of... Uh, yeah, loads and loads of different music. Predominantly, my main interest is really in writing music, I guess, um, or and making original music, and that kind of spans the right across the genre from weird electronic stuff to like spontaneous compositions, and then entirely like three composed, almost like chamber music and stuff. But um, yeah, so that's about it, really. Awesome, uh, and you brought it up, and that's kind of what I really wanted to get straight into was some of the. I was going to say non-musical, but maybe it isn't non-musical for you. So you're you're a yoga practitioner for a long time. Could you tell us a bit about getting into yoga and incorporating it into your life? In as if there's a brief version of that story, could you tell us it? I started practicing yoga in two thousand and nine. I think yeah, two thousand and nine. So that's what it'll be twelve years this year. Um, I was kind of going yeah. I went through a breakup um with an ex-partner and the cat we lived together and all of this and then yeah we, we sped up she moved away and stuff and then i was in just a pretty dark place for a while i was working a job that i wasn't really into at a college of music where i felt massively underappreciated and wasn't valued and stuff so it was just in, in not a very good place really um and I kind of, yeah, was going out in the weekends and partying too much and then just in this kind of negative cycle of stuff, really. I needed to remove myself from this negative um, thing that I found myself in. So I took myself off traveling. I went around Southeast Asia um, backpacking um, in my whatever age I was then, 30-odd, uh, early 30s. Um, and I'd never done anything like that before, so I travelled around and I went to a place in Koh Phangan in Thailand and I'd done a 10-day meditation and yoga retreat there and I discovered Ashtanga Yoga, which is the form of yoga that I practice and teach now. Um, and I just kind of really connected with it. It was like, oh, wow, this is incredible. A real sort of enlightening moment of like, this is kind of what I've been looking for sort of thing. And then when I came back to Leeds, 
I was living in Leeds at the time. I met my teacher, Joey Miles, um, at the yoga space. And I started to study with him. Uh, and I studied with him kind of every day, more or less, for, for a few years. And he taught me completely from scratch in the traditional method as it's taught in India. And then after a few years, he said to me, you should go to India. And I was like, OK, <laughs> just kind of went. He was one of the first teachers that I've ever met where I kind of completely surrendered to him in a, in a weird way. Um, yeah, and kind of really devoted myself to him and to the practice um, because there's a real authenticity in the way that he taught. And I kind of, I've, you know, experienced other yoga teachers who are talk the talk, but you know that they're not, they haven't done it themselves. Whereas with Joey, it was like he, you could tell he really experienced it in the way that he taught. Um, and, anyway, and then I went to India and studied. I've been over in India several times um, studying in Mysore. Uh, with the guru of Ashtanga Yogi there. And then I also spent some time in Barkala in South India um, doing a teacher training. Um, so yeah, and I practice, yeah, I've been practicing for 11 years, um, kind of pretty much on a daily basis, like six days a week type of thing. Uh, I get up at 5 a.m. Um, six days a week and I practice yoga and I meditate before my children get up <laughs> to keep me, to keep me, to keep me sane. Um, yeah and yeah and it's it's completely transformed my life like it has totally and utterly transformed my life and not anything like the person i was before yoga that's that's really really interesting um um i want to jump over to emma and talk a little bit about a couple of different things here so i think one of the one of the things that i was keen to ask you about is similar i guess you started cycling pretty intensively for a period last year right <laughs> obviously the gym's closed and everything and um i've got a bit of like a longish term knee injury so i can't run um mm. without it being bad um so i was still doing like quite a lot of physio for that and um he rec and i'd been like kind of cycling at the gym before i stopped doing that so i thought that i would try and cycle outside which i suppose is a natural extension of that and then i kind of did that for a bit and ended up just like buying a kind of cheapish bike because all the gigs had gone i had no money mm -hmm. um and then yeah it was just something that i did tried to do like just to get out of the house and kind of do a bit of exercise and then um yeah i just saw this thing that was like a charity bike ride um, mm -hmm. and it was to do 300 miles in a month in September and I kind of thought so up to that point I'd been cycling for like six months and I'd done 222 miles in total <laughs> um, and for some reason I thought oh yeah go on I'll give that a go <laughs> um, and it, it was good it was really really good actually it was super hard and very painful but it gave me like something else to think about every day. And it was like a routine thing. And I knew that if I missed a day that I'd have to do like much more the next day. And I didn't mm -hmm. think I could handle that. So I, pretty, I did 10 miles pretty much every day. And I did a few like 20 mile bike rides. So nothing like you see people doing, you know, like really long rides or anything like that. But it was kind of just, it was good. And I tried to like write some music in some different ways as I did it. Um, Usually the, sorry, this is such a long answer. Um, That's good, it's good. Usually the way I write things is that um, little melodies kind of pop into my head when I'm not working. Um, I, that's the way that I write most of the music for the group at least. Um, and so that was good because I'd been kind of finding up to that point, like sitting in here and trying to write, it just doesn't always work for me. Um, so it's kind of like seeing different things on my roots and quite a lot of them are like, next to water, which I like. And so if I was getting little ideas, I was kind of trying to develop those during the days. And it was just a, a good thing to focus on and obviously great to raise some money for charity. And mm. um, it was kind of really, uh, as well, like loads of people sponsored me. And especially at the moment, I think when so many people are not gigging and, and, and not 
like you know have lost so much mm. in terms of um kind of income it was really just kind of lovely to like ch chat to some people about it and just everything that came with it like people were really kind and supportive whether financially or just like checking in to see how i was doing on day 16 when my legs didn't work anymore <laughs> it was just it was great it was really nice big thanks to both emma and dave for coming on to talk about this it's definitely a really really hard time especially at the beginning of the year and with everything going on but it's really, really interesting to speak to musicians who are making the most out of that and still making plans to move ahead. Check out the links in the description below if you want to find out more about what they are doing. But right now, we're going to kick over to our lovely correspondent, Helena Summerfield. She's bringing us an interview with the Manchester-based SNG. That's the Secret Night Gang, a soul jazz band started by two friends, Callum Connell on sax and... Kemani Anderson, a vocalist who came up through the Manchester education system, they've just been signed and one of the tracks, as we hinted earlier, has been picked up for use in Grand Theft Auto. So, let's find out what that's about. My name's Callum Connell uh, and I'm a sax player in Secret Night Gang and one of the founding members of SNG. One day in a long ago I am... I'm Kimani Anderson and I'm the vocalist of the Secret Night Gang and also another one of the founders of SNG. So am I right in thinking that you were about 14 when you started writing music together? Yeah, it was about um, yeah, it was about 14 when um, me and Kimani first started writing music together. Um, but. We'd actually, you know, known each other a lot longer before that as well. Um, we first we first met playing football, actually. Um, yeah, um, and then we played football for, for a couple of years together every week um, um, at the Manchester City Soccer Dome in Fallowfield. Um, and then we lost contact, actually, for about about three years, Kamani. Three years, yeah, correct. Three years, and then, like, ironically enough, we ended up going to the same high school and then for a good year, I didn't even know that he went to the same high school as us. And then it wasn't until about year eight where we started playing Steel Pans, where we then started to recognize each other. And yeah, we just never looked back since and developed a love for music properly from the age of 14, I guess, you know? My first musical thing that I did was um, singing in a choir. Mm -hmm. in in primary school and I used to sing for the choir and we used to go around churches around Manchester and singing different choirs and you know at Christmas and stuff and do the carols um, and then when I went to high school um, I started to play piano and I started to play steel pans they were that was my first thing that I started to play <laughs> I was brought up in the church mm -hmm. and I was like heavy influenced by like gospel music but then I remember like being like that six, seven year old kid that would be in the back of his like dad's car, listening to Smooth FM, hearing like soul tunes like Ain't No Stopping Us Now and like Part Time Lover. And that's mm. was my real exposure to music from a young age. And the fact that like my parent, my, my mom especially, she's a singer. My brothers are also musicians as well, kind of contributed to that like love for music. I loved playing classical music, classical piano, and then I kind of really went off going really like, I just kind of didn't want to play classical music anymore mm -hmm. because the, the, the school jazz band, everyone got to play in that because that was, you know, that was the way everyone get to go to do the concerts stuff was playing a, an instrument that you could play in a jazz band. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I did, was only playing classical piano. So that's when I then picked up the saxophone and I was taught by Helen Pillinger and um, she was my saxophone teacher and yeah she developed me into the person and that I needed to be to then she taught me the way of you know getting into the records and getting into the music and she was a really big influence on on me and my learning um, and then yeah and then she she brought me into all the jazz courses that were going on in Manchester getting me involved in the right contacts and then my musical career started developing even more then, you know, I started playing saxophone 
and to quite a really good level at some point then. I did a steel puns in primary school, carried that on for another eight years, from year two to year 11, of eight and nine years. Mm -hmm. But then in that space of time, I also developed a love for singing as well. I sang in the church for a few years. And yeah, it was, it was cool, but then I was hearing all these other artists like Luther Vandross and Marvin Gaye and Donny Hathaway that weren't necessarily doing gospel music, they were doing soul mm. music, but it still resonated with me and it yeah. meant a lot to me. And I, I've always wanted to like kind of make music like that or like kind of in tribute to that, if you know what I mean. Like meeting Callum kind of like exposed me to all kinds of music and I remember the first concert that we properly did and that was at like Band on the Wall, like properly, our first proper gig was at Band on the Wall and ever since that day, like I knew that this is what I wanted to do, so just <laughs> That brings us nicely to your band, um, can you tell me a little yeah. bit about SNG? Come on, do you want to say a little bit? Yeah, well, it, it all started in the summer of 2018, really, where me and Callum, we went to Love Supreme Jazz Festival. Ah, when we were allowed and to go to festivals. Yes, yeah. when, we, when, it, when festivals was a thing, when everything was all plain sailing. Yeah. <laughs> when we could all breathe properly kind of thing, like, we were able to go to... Love Supreme Festival, where we saw some of our favorite artists like Earth, Wind, and Fire, George Clinton, and the Funkadelics, and like Level 42 as well, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So Level 42 as well, and we were just so inspired. Mm -hmm. We wanted to like write music after we had seen all of that. It was just a life-changing weekend. So then, yes, about a week later, we then go to Jam Street and we meet another like member of the band but also another founder named Stuart, hey. uh, Stuart Whitehead and um, we have a discussion he shows us like previous things that he did in the past and we digged it we really liked it we liked the vibe that he was on yeah so Stuart, Stu's me Kamani and Stu used to have a rehearsal room next to the old tram yard in Old Trafford mm -hmm and we used to go there super late at night we'd all like been we'd been to college or whatever else and we'd all been busy all day and then we'd turn up at about nine ten o'clock at night and we'd rehearse till early hours in the morning and um Stu's son come home one day and was like oh dad i've joined a gang like yours and he's like, oh my secret. god it's, and he goes oh oh my god oh, what's it called and he goes it's the secret night gang he says that's fantastic and, and that's, where, that's where it came from he was like that's fantastic <laughs> that's great you know we, and we kept it since because that's what we essentially that's what we were doing we were we were writing albums and writing music between you know the three of us together in the late rehearsal rooms at night and no one knew about it stuck, it kind of obviously stuck with Stu's son and, and that's where the name ended up coming from and I think it's yeah it was just a it was what we were doing. No one knew that we were writing music. No one in Manchester knew. It was all kept a secret for quite a long time, actually. And then, you know, everything's come out now and uh, um, great things have happened for this year. So, so who else is in the band? Can you talk me through the lineup? Yeah, so the lineup of the band is uh, Kamani, Kamani Anderson on vocals. Hey. Um, I'm on saxophone. Um, Stuart Whitehead's on bass. Um, and then we switched between Aaron Wood and Elias Atkinson on drum pits. Um, Mikey Wilson, the legendary Mikey Wilson, is on drums. Um, Jack Duckham on guitar. Jack Duckham on guitar. Um, Kamani's playing a lot of keyboards at the moment for live stuff, but um, also featuring on the album will be John Ellis mm -hmm. and Al Scott as well. I was going to say, it kind of was a bit of a, like a who's who of uh, Manchester music, that, that sounds amazing. Yeah, and <laughs> we have the, we have running the whole project and uh, he's our producer and uh, engineer, um, is Ron Ellis. Fantastic. And, and I hear exciting news about the band getting signed to uh, Roundswood Recordings, is that right? 
Yeah, that's right. That is right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, um, we've we've obviously released two singles, and the second single, the sun, uh, Giles Peterson picked up and absolutely loved it. Yeah. Um, played it out on BBC Radio Six. Fantastic. Um, Gave it a few played it the whole eight minutes as well, which is, you know, quite remarkable to get a whole eight minute song played nowadays. And rewinded it about two, three times. And we time. rewinded it, yeah. <laughs> Spun oh. it back to the top two or three times. Um, and then after that, yeah, we started having talks and yeah, Giles, Giles offered us a deal to, to be part of their team and and work with them. And yeah, we couldn't we couldn't say no really because oh, no, you know, congratulations, that's brilliant. <laughs> Oh, thank he's, you. He's an, thank yeah, you. Giles is such a you know he's an absolute legend on the scene, and you know for me, he basically you know without him the London scene wouldn't be what it is today because you know he's helped so many people become you know form this new London jazz scene and it's it's blowing up across the world really. Yeah, and it's <laughs> nice to see you know great artists coming out of London now and touring the world. I'm glad you guys are there representing Manchester, though. You know our northern always. jazz scene, yeah. Always, <laughs> always, every day, every and, day. And can like video game um, addicts catch your um, single, The Sun, on on a game? Yes, we can. Um, about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so they uh, oh, we yeah. did. We did have. Um, we had talks with Rockstar Games, and they loved The Sun, the new single, and so Giles Peterson put it in his worldwide um, GTA playlist. So you can listen to the playlist on YouTube, or if you're playing the game, um, Grand Theft Auto, you can go on Worldwide FM and listen to our new single, The Sun. It's the very last song as well, I must it's put It's the there. very last song of the playlist. <laughs> Save the best till the last. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow, I would die happy if one of my songs was in GTA. That is amazing. Yeah, that's, that's really cool. That's a really cool thing to land. Yeah, and um, that's something that I might look into is, is video games and jazz. That would be something really interesting, maybe exciting for our next episode if, if we did something in that area. Uh, comment below if that's something that you'd be interested in. And let's go back to our top eight radio and podcast choices. So Excellent. Over to you, John. Number, number seven. <laughs> seven is where we're up to. Uh, this is kind of a three for one as well. Ribble FM, in association with the Ribble Valley Jazz and Blues Festival, present a regular Wednesday program. Uh, it features a rotating cast of presenters Alan Bramwell, Sue Bradley, Miles Peachy, and Matt Evans together as a duo, and Phil Lee. Uh, they bring wide ranging sounds to this program. Jazz greats from across the decades are rubbing shoulders with new artists. You've got crossover hits, you've got music from around the world and music right on our doorstep with local artists represented front and centre. It's all in here. It's always super adventurous programming and very exciting. Also, Ribble Valley are on the lookout for presenters who are under the age of 25. If you feel like getting involved, you should get in touch. Go to their website and see whether or not you could be the next presenting voice for the Ribble Valley Jazz Festival programme. And finally, at number eight, we have Midweek Jazz with Helena Summerfield. Um, so this is the idea of this, which I think is amazing. I think it's great. It's just what we need. In the middle of the week, it's a weekly radio show with loads of jazz. And Helena's passion really comes through in the discuss discussions that she has and the choices of music. So if you are interested, um, it is being hosted by Reform Radio and you can find Midweek Jazz if you go to mixcloud.com and search Midweek Jazz. All links are below. Each month I choose a different musical theme and play tracks that reflect this and explore this. I like to play a mixture of classic and contemporary tracks. And it's also great if I can play music by my friends and colleagues and I try to represent the northern jazz scene. I'm always happy for people to send me music or if they'd like to come and chat to me about a project they're working on. That's great. So I'm always really happy to have uh, new submissions for midweek jazz. Hmm. One of the nice things as well about Helena's programme is that she 
kind of makes it herself. You know, it's a very DIY kind of effort. And uh, if you are interested in making your own podcast or your own radio program, we want to hear from you. We are planning a series of how-to sessions on different subjects moving forward into 2021 here at Jazz North. And we'd like to know if folks are interested, if there is enough interest in the various topics that we're looking at exploring. We'll be looking at hosting live advice sessions about getting started in things like the world of podcasting or the world of jazz online radio. So drop us an email, news at jazznorth.org, or leave a comment under this video if you want to find out more. Now that we're at the end of our list, I suppose... Oh, hang on. There is one thing that we've got to do before we before we finish off, right? Yes. Yes. Is it that we've, time? It's that time again. We've got to take a trip down the garden path to... Meg's Musical Toolshed. Tool <laughs> <laughs> who, who is in the toolshed with you this month, Megan? Today we have Dave Shooter. Um, I talked to Dave for quite a while about all the technology he's using to create his own music. Um, and he also talks a lot about Ableton. So if that's something that you're interested in, um, definitely have a look. Enjoy. I wanted to speak to you about this with this um, section of our broadcast because when I had come to play at Lancaster Jazz for the first time and you were um, you were programming and presenting at that and we also stayed my band stayed at yours as well absolutely you sort of grew through the weekend I think there was one of you and then there was two of you then there was three of you then four of you and there's not <laughs> yeah. even four of you in the band yet they still somehow <laughs> managed to be <laughs> it was great um, and then uh, we were talking about pedals because I had this massive pedal board I was lugging around and you were just ecstatic about what you've got as well. So we had a bit of a nerd session talking about that. So I was really excited to get you on to talk Excellent. about your stuff. So um, what is your favourite piece of gear and why? Oh, okay. It's... Um... Oh, difficult one. That's really hard. Um, they, they, I love all my pedals equally, Megan. I love all my pedals <laughs> equally. Um, um, I say it, 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 a cheat's way out would be, be my bare-faced 112, big baby 112 cab, because that seems to make everything sound... I've played the pedal board through lots of other cabs and things, and they, it just never sounds quite right, whereas that always sounds absolutely amazing. So that's... Mm. That's a cheat's answer, but um, pedal-wise, it's probably stalling for time. Um, I've got a, low, a, a, a Moog, Moog Fuga low-pass filter, <gasps> which is like a big, they're, they're huge things. They take up a lot of real estate on your pedal board, so they've got mm -hmm. to be, I suppose, yeah, if, if, it give, if I give it that much space on the board, when it only does one thing, that's got to be a favourite, I suppose, because it takes up a serious amount of space. Yeah. Um, so that's like a... Um, it's a low-pass filter with a, a, a cut-off and a resonance style on it, um, and so um, and that's so actually yeah. To make it even worse or better, it has a, an expression pedal going into it, which is also pretty seriously huge as well in real wow. estate on the board, um, and that controls the cut-off. So what's really cool about uh, filters are great when they're static, but what's really cool about filters is when you move them. Yeah. Um, so basically, it's a big dirty analog filter mode with mode circuitry in it and it's um you can get serious wump from the um from the from manipulating the cutoff um so oh. i do that all manually and so it, it, it'll be one of two things i suppose generally which is i suppose a filter sweep where you get like a where you sort of like dial in your your grit so you have, you have a fuzz tone tone with loads of fuzz and top in it you back the filter off and then wump it in gradually so you get the dirt to come in or you start with the dirt on and take the dirt out so it goes from a dirty sound to a subby sound um and so that's really cool and then also the other thing i do which i practice an awful lot to do is um manually wubbing it so when you listen to a lot of a lot of music that has heavy filter use on it there's a lot of automated filters 
um, giving rhythms and stuff like that. So I practiced long and hard to try and get a, a fairly effective um, pumping thing going on. Um, and I practice, yeah, I, I can go from triplets to quavers to oh, semi quavers. Wow. And so it's, so it's not in an attempt at and sweep and then a bit of a pump. So it's not sort of, yeah, it's trying to make it organic as well. So it's, it is organic, but it's, it's sort of nicking tropes, I suppose, from digital music, but you're also mm -hmm. making it, um, yeah. Okay, let's hear it. As well. That was great. I absolutely love Dave Shuley. He's such a nice dude. Yeah, he's it, he was so welcoming when when our band played at Lancaster Jazz. Uh, we ended up staying at his house, and they were 
just so kind, so lovely. Um, so yeah, it was really nice to catch up with Dave again. Um, Definitely. And just a quick reminder, um, it's obviously we're going through a really difficult time at the moment. If you are finding that you are feeling really low and you don't feel like you've got someone to talk to, please remember that there is a helpline for musicians. Um, it's Music Minds Matter. It's the campaign led by Help Musicians and it is a 24-hour helpline for just to talk to someone about what you might be struggling with. The number is 0808 802 8008 Yes, don't be afraid to reach out for help if you need it from any source where you can get it and check in with the people around you as well if we can all help each other out and get through 2021 a little bit easier than 2020 then we'll be way better off for being part of this fantastic community together Thanks so much for joining us on Jazz North Online I'm John Pope, this is Megan Rowe we are going to leave you for this month with a little snippet of music from Svark, Hanley Longhorn, the trio of Nick Svark on guitar, Martin Longhorn on organ, and Steve Hanley on drums. They've got new music coming out very, very soon, and we're maybe going to be talking about it next month as we do our record label roundup, a new release roundup, a whole bunch of talk about exciting new music. So take care of yourselves, and here's a little bit of Svark, Hanley Longhorn. Bye-bye. Bye! -bye. Bye.